Hello there. Welcome to the stream. Hello, Danny. How's it going? I'm in full metal hermit mode today to celebrate the re-release of my favorite video game of all time. So I've brought out the hermit robes and the whole nine. We'll spare no expense today. Bear with me just a moment while we get a few things together here and we'll start the stream. Hey, Saddle Cat, how are you doing? It's good to see you. Alright, before I start, I'll need some batteries for the controller. It's been a lazy day for me. Yes, me too. doing well. I'm glad that you had a nice relaxing day for a change. We don't get many of those. So today I'm going to be streaming the remake of the original Wizardry. Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord. You've seen me play uh, one of the more recent games, one of the Japanese games, but this is the original game that started it all, but with a fresh coat of paint. The original game was uh, released for the Apple IIe back in 1981, and I've never played that version of the game, actually. Instead, I played the, uh, I think it was 1984, Macintosh release, which was really cool. The original Macintosh, if you don't know, was black and white. It had a, a monochrome screen. Um, and I love that game so much. There's a cool story behind it that I'll tell uh, once we get going. Um, I didn't know it was out yet. So, it is out in early release. This is the alpha build of the game. Um, which is not quite as unstable, unstable as you might think. Um, because what they've done is they took the original Apple IIe code and then wrapped it in the Unreal Engine. So all of the calculations and, and inner workings, the code that runs the game itself, is the original, well, it's the original programming. Um, but all of the new pretty decorations around it is what's new. Um, and with that in mind, it's not all finished. Now, the whole game is playable from beginning to end. But what's not available is some of the artwork. Uh, for example, when you create characters. Um, the human race has multiple portraits to choose from. Uh, but the other races just have placeholder pictures for male and female. Have you launched the game before? I think launching once before you play might help avoid a nasty save data bug. Thanks, Quiet Panda. Yeah, I actually have. I launched the game, uh, poked around for a few minutes, checked some of the settings. So, yeah, I have. Um, so if that's the case, this is the first time I'm hearing about it, um, I should be good to go with that. Um, it's been incredible seeing this release because I had no idea it was coming out. None whatsoever. Uh, the night before, Digital Eclipse, a game developer who specializes in bringing back a lot of old retro titles, posted the original Wizardry logo with the tagline soon underneath it. Um, now naturally I was super excited but a lot of the people who were replying to it are people who were involved in documentaries of other recent uh, games so I had resigned myself to believe this was nothing more than a documentary about the making of the first Wizardry but I was happily mistaken the next day when not only did they announce that the game was coming out but they announced that it was coming out that day in alpha form and so I immediately bought it um, and I can't wait to play it like in its entirety um, the cool thing about it is I've been a lifelong wizardry fan I, I used to run 
the, I don't want to say the first, but one of the first wizardry fan sites on the internet. Um, started back in 97. Kyler's Wizardry Den was the name of the site. Um, and in the early, even the early days of the internet that 97 was, I call it the early days of the internet, but in reality it, it had been around for quite a while. I had people from all over the world contacting me, and there was a gentleman in, I think, Singapore who helped um, draft the maps. We mapped the game and posted uh, you know, maps for people to look at on the website. Um, and ever since the late 90s, early 2000s, I've had all of the old website files just sitting on a hard drive. Um, and now that this game was out in a place where people could, could purchase it and, and talk about it, um, I was able to take all of those old files, my old walkthrough, my maps, and post them in a public forum. If you go to Steam and you look up this game, you'll see uh, all of my maps there. I have the first walkthrough posted for it. Um, and all of it's still relevant because it is the same game that it was in 1981. Um, just a lot prettier. And when I say that, I mean a lot prettier. So. Give me a second while we go ahead and get uh, while I go ahead and get a few things set up. I thought I was going to play in the hermit robe tonight, but this thing is extremely hot. So the intro will have to, to suit everybody. I'm probably going to do a lot of talking during this stream because I have a lot to tell about wizardry. For the longest time, I was afraid that I was one of the only Wizardry fans still left out there, because not even ten years ago it was very difficult to find much being said about it. Like everybody refers to it as the grandfather of computer role-playing games, but aside from stuff on GameFAQs and a couple of old archived websites. There's just not a lot of people talking about it. It's bigger in Japan than it probably ever was here in the U.S., unfortunately. All right. So bear with me while the screen does some transitioning. I need to go ahead and get a few things put together. So hang tight with me, please. And as usual, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Don't be shy. Right, we'll see how well this works. All right, perfect. It worked perfectly. So first thing that I noticed, oh, hang tight one second. Otherwise, we're going to have a lot of bad feedback here. There we go. Sorry about that. I hope that sounds better. One of the first things I noticed about this game, this new version, is the music in it is seems to be heavily inspired by the Nintendo version of the game. Uh, this game was ported to the Nintendo Entertainment System in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and this music almost sounds like the Nintendo music, but it's not quite. Um, I don't know if there was copyright issues or what, but it is heavily inspired by that. Before we start the game, I want to take a look at this dev letter because I think this is really, really neat. It says, Wizardry Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord first appeared on the Apple II in September 81. Many of today's most popular and successful games owe their origins to what this pioneering title established. We feel that it's important that modern players have the opportunity to experience and appreciate everything that made this milestone so beloved and influential. And this is the cool part. This remake is built directly on top of the original Apple II version, our primary goal is to make the original game accessible to modern players while remaining faithful to the original feel and gameplay. Every decision and revision has been made with this goal in mind. And then it talks a bit about, um, you know, how you can revert back to the old gameplay um, and things of that nature. 
So the question that I have is, how do I want to play the game? It says in this remake, you start a new game with a starter party of six pre-made level two characters of varying classes. You can make your own characters. The game is unforgiving. Build a party steadily, return to the town often. So I like the fact that already in the game, it's giving people who have never experienced wizardry a bit of a walkthrough, a bit of a tutorial. Um, the old game came with a manual. This obviously does not. And then this last paragraph, it is important to know that party members will die. That's true. I'm a wizardry veteran, and when I played this the other day, first fight, I lost two characters. It was just that easy. So, I like the default characters here, but I think I do want to go ahead and make my own. Where are the game options? Let's see. Here we are. The old school options. So it seems like in this new version, we actually have a mini map. Um, I can't imagine that it's just there. I'm hoping it's tied to the map spell. Duma pick. Oh, well, text. Here we go. Text only. Duma pick. Spell works to provide map coordinates and facing. All right. So, yeah, I think we're going to leave it visual because I want to see what that's about. Random starting attribute points. Interesting. So in the old game, when you create a character, they're given a random allotment of bonus points that you can use to assign to stats. Um, kind of like rolling a D&D character with dice. Um, it seems like in this version, by default, that doesn't happen. Of course, you can turn it on. random attribute advancement okay so I love how descriptive all of this is original in and age configure this is fantastic so you can play vanilla wizardry with all the new bells and whistles or you can play with some of these suggested enhancements I like it I see up here you can do custom you can play it like it was on the NES you can play it like it was on the Apple II hmm okay so I'll tell you what I've played Wizardry a thousand times. Let me go ahead and, and play as they're suggesting it. Let's play. Let's go ahead and just play with a starter party, and we'll see how it goes. One thing I want to point out is in the lower right corner of the screen, you see that white text. That is what the game looked like on the Apple. There it is. Big. So this is what it looks like now. That down there is what it used to look like. The same screen, what it used to look like in the 80s. That's pretty neat. And you can turn it on or off. So I've got my characters. Let me see what they are. Can I see what they are? Let's see. What's the trick here? The training grounds. Inspect roster. Here we go. All right. So I've got a human fighter. This is a level 2 character, by the way. I have an Elf Priest, Neutral Human Fighter, Good Human Fighter, Neutral Human Fighter, Neutral Halfling Thief, We've got a Bishop and a Mage. So that's cool. This is actually sort of the party that I, that I would have made. So yeah, we'll just go with it. And so if you remember from some of the from the other wizardry game that I played, the town is where all of your inn is, the, the item shop, the the temple. The game takes place in the maze and you return to town routinely to sell, to heal, to level up. So let's see what the game has to tell us here. You have taken your first step into the fabled maze of Logaman. It was only a short time ago that Overlord Trevor sent out the call beckoning the country's adventurers to come to this place. The story, as it was told, was that his one-time friend and advisor, the wizard Werdna, had stolen the Overlord's prized amulet and escaped with it into the mysterious maze, a dungeon built of magic, chaos, and death. The Overlord promises power and the rank of honor guard to any adventurer who recovers his amulet. And so you came, and somewhere deep within the mage's Stygian halls, the powerful wizard Werdna awaits. 
camera blocking quite a bit of the interface at times. Better placement might be lower left. Okay, good call. Thank you, a non-game. Let's do that. All right. So it looks like the game is actually auto-mapping for me. Right above my uh, portrait here, right above the camera, you see the green map. And as I take a step, it's auto-mapping. Back in the day, I used to have to get out graph paper and map every step. So this is a welcome advancement. I love the graphics. I love it. So as soon as I open this door, more than likely, there's going to be a, a battle. That's just the way it is. And of course the game decided to prove me wrong, this once in a lifetime instance. But historically when I start this game, I'll spend the first two or three levels, character levels, going down this hall and up the north hall, just fighting, opening doors and fighting monsters until my characters are about level three. There should be another door down here. There's an encounter. So the cool thing about wizardry is a lot of times when you start you don't know what you're fighting. It says three skeletons but the characters have identified them as kobolds. The developers of this game have stated that one of the things they plan to add is a bestiary so that you can track the monsters um, and sort of collect them in a list which is cool. So generally in Wizardry, the first uh, three people in the party attack. The ones in the back either defend or cast spells. This shouldn't be a very difficult fight. So we're going to just fight, 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 parry, parry, parry. Kobold hits hard. Very nice. Now one thing that my priest here can do is dispel undead. I should have tried that from the beginning. All right. And we have a chest. Oh, this is cool. The characters here will leave you tips. I've never seen that before. Probably best to let me inspect this chest. It could be trapped, and we'll need a gentle hand if it is. So that's one really cool way of getting around um, the lack of a manual without interrupting the game. So he thinks it's a stunner. Let's try to disarm a stunner. And it worked. 11 gold pieces. Now, my character here, Sarah, is now at half of their hit points. So we're going to go to camp. And we are going to... Where's my priest? She's the priest. We're going to go ahead and heal that. Now you notice, the spells have weird names. Kalki, Dios, Badios, Milwa. When, excuse me, the original developers made Wizardry, they wanted to create spell names that sounded mysterious. Um, they don't actually, they're not rooted in any true language. Because I had an interview with Robert Woodhead many years ago, and he called it a mock Welsh. And that was um, their whole idea. Is they wanted the, the spells and the language that the spells were written in to have a vocabulary, to have a grammar to them. So, Dios is heal. Badios is harm. Um, Milwa will, will light up the dungeon, right? There's another spell later called um, Low Milwa that will light it up for a longer period of time. So these spells kind of have prefixes and suffixes. Um, you'll see that as we continue to go along. Um, in this game, it's not so much a thing of lighting the dungeon, but Milwa, when cast, will let you see hidden doors. So we'll cast it here. I don't believe there's any hidden doors anywhere around us right now. But if there are, the Milwa spell will let us see them. Very informative stream. Thanks for doing your homework. Oh, you're welcome. It's not so much homework as it is a lifelong uh, time of playing wizardry. <laughs> So we have another encounter. Two leather-clad men. 
probably rogues, thieves, whatever they're calling them. Highwaymen, I think. Bushwhackers. Here we are. So we're going to attack. Attack, attack, attack. Parry. Are we going to waste a spell? Katino should put them to sleep. We'll try that. It didn't work. Katino fizzled. Or was ineffective in this instance. So I want to say I'm really pushing it by doing a second fight. In these early levels, it's usually a good idea to go down, fight, go up, heal. What's this here? Okay. All right, we'll inspect the chest. Thinks it's blades. That's one I've never heard before. All right. So, I'm a weird person. I like to map every square of the dungeon. Those of you who have watched me play the other wizardry games know that. So what to do, what to do. I don't want to venture too deep at level two. Four small humanoids. Kobolds, it looks like. Let's try to put these guys to sleep. I've only got one spell left. One kobold fled. I like the the chain there at the bottom that shows the the action order. That's cool. I'm loving this. That's awesome, Sadokan. I'm so glad. You remember the last Wizardry game, the, the anime style one. So I'm curious to hear what you think about that versus this. So before I venture any further, I'm going to go to town and we're going to recover magic points. Visit the inn. So in this game, when you rest at the inn, your characters age. Um, you get to choose like where in the inn they sleep. The stables is free, but it only refills spell points. It does not um, actually heal. Consumes some vim. I'm not sure what vim is. In the in the older game, in in the original version, they would age in days, months, or years and get older. Uh, the problem with that is when characters reach, when they age past their prime, at level up, their stats start to go down more than they start to go up. So as they get old, they become less effective. Um, I guess vim perhaps is some mechanic that is ch changing that a little bit, or maybe a new way to just see that. Um, the stables historically would age your characters slower than the other places. So I'm going to go to the stables. It tells us how many experience points we need to level up. Oh, I got to do that for every character. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So I should have my spell points back. Let's check it out and see. Yes, I do. Okay. So everybody was at full health already. Back to the maze we go. Vim is a reworking of the age system. It's functionally identical, but hopefully expressed a little more clearly. Interesting. I'm sorry, Herman, I was putting popcorn in the microwave. What did you ask about the other game? Um, I was asking, you've seen... Uh, Labyrinth of Lost Souls, the Japanese wizardry game, and I'm curious to see how that compares to this one. Like, what do you think about the differences? Oh, I missed a corridor down here. So we have five undead kobolds here. So we are going to dispel undead and see how many we can take out. And we're just going to keep our fingers crossed. Fails to dispel. Not good. I don't usually keep a priest in the front line when I played. 
in the past, I would actually put a thief up there. I've always heard that was not the best thing to do, but it always worked for me. So having my cleric or priest or whatever you want to call it in the front line is unusual for me personally. I like to do a priest early and a thief later. I think the reason I did it the way that I've always done it is because I get very stuck on the plan that my thief is going to turn into a ninja at some point. Alright, so we believe it's an anti-magic trap. No trap found. Oh, map the rest of the room. Which is really pointless, I know. But, it's old habit. So if you look down here in the lower right at the Apple II version, right there, that's the artwork that an orc used to, to have. And now they look like this. So that's so cool. And they've, they've mentioned a lot of the artwork, uh, monster animations, spell animations, a lot of that may be replaced as they continue to develop the game. I like playing Wizardry 5. I love Wizardry 5. It was the first game that sort of expanded the ideas started in the first three. Um, the dungeon's bigger. It doesn't follow the same rules as far as how big the, the floors are. Um, and there's a little bit more interaction with NPCs in that game. Trapless chest. Well, we're going to pretend like it has a common trap for this level. Just in case. Did you base this remake on the 3.0 patch that came out this year or the original version? Well, I'm not the developer of this game, so I, I shouldn't answer this question, but I can tell you the 3.0 patch that came out is not official. It's a fan-made patch. Uh, I think Snafaru hosted that on his site. I don't even... He might have even been the one that made it. Um, it's just a modification to the original code with some rebalancing and things. I can guarantee you this game is not using the 3.0 code base. Oh, I see. He was asking Panda. Okay. My mistake. I'm shuffling between two screens. Panda here is one of the devs. Awesome. Well, Panda, thanks so much for watching. Please correct me if I say anything that's incorrect. <laughs> All right. So up ahead is some pretty nasty stuff. If I go through this archway, it's going to be nothing but pure black, nothing but dark. It's not quite as scary as it seems. Here's the stairs down to level two. But when you're playing this game for the first time and you don't know what's around any corner, when you take that step into complete blindness, it's super frightening. It scared the fire out of me when I was a kid. My introduction to wizardry is a really great story that I'll share with you when this battle's over. I always forget to dispel. I think Panda is stalking the wizardry these days category. I don't blame him or her. If I was involved in a project of this importance and you know because wizardry is it's legendary and if I had any involvement in it I would be curious to see the reception to see what people were thinking to see what people are doing with the game trapless chest it's 
It's fun to watch people play, especially for the first time. Panda, I hope you are prepared for all of us old grognards who are going to beg you to do the same for Knight of Diamonds and Legacy of Logaman. If you have not heard these requests, they are coming. I promise you they're coming. So I'm going to warn you guys, this is the fight that might wipe the party right here. This is not going to go well. In fact, do I just want to try to hoof it? The running is not working out in my favor. Mm, all right. So we're going to go in the kobolds. We are going to heal. Sesmar. We're going to attack. So what is this? Why is Hawkwind able to attack a group? Why can Hawkwind reach the back row? Could I do that before? Let me go back. Oh, okay. I could do that before. Interesting. All right. Heal. We are going to try to put the kobolds to sleep. And flame them. Hawkwind is down. All right, so we have some kobolds asleep, so that'll help. tempted to try to dispel, but we're going to heal and continue to attack. We're going to little fire the guys in the front. When you're level 1, 2, sometimes even 3, a uh, battle of this size is bad news. And it seems like the more uh, monsters in the in the fight, the harder it is to run. I don't know if that's true, but it's always seemed that way for me. Alright, fight. Dispel. Fight. Parry. Cast a spell. So if you've ever read any of my wizardry reviews on my site, or if you've looked at uh, the guide that I posted on Steam, the story of how I encounter wizardry is kind of popular among people who frequent my, my writings. And it is, my friend had the Macintosh version of wizardry on his computer. And one night I spent the night and we played it, and we played it against his best judgment because the game belonged to his dad and the characters were his dad's characters. And we played it, and I think we were down on the fourth level somewhere, and the whole party got slaughtered, just got wiped out. And he was upset because his dad was going to be mad that we killed his characters. His dad was out of town, so we spent the entire night rolling new characters with the intent of going down into the maze and finding his father's party and bringing them back to town safely where they could be resurrected. And we're going to have a full party wipe right here. Ah, love it. And so that's what got me into the game was it wasn't just we were checking out this game. We had to go and save my friend from a fate that was sure to befall him. This is going to be a sad story. <laughs> I don't remember what happened. I don't know. I really don't recall if we uh, 
managed to succeed in rescuing the party or not because all I cared about at that point was the game and um, as soon as I could I got a copy for our IBM PC at home so we wiped out complete wipe so now's a good time I think to roll a new party so yeah oh so no the attribute points do change did I turn that off Oh, I just skipped the 20. So, okay, I must—I think I did turn that off in the options because the first time I played this the other day, I noticed that the attribute points seem to be the same except slightly different for each race, but they're actually rolling up now. So one of the things that used to eat up so much time when I'd play Wizardry back in the day is we would just enter the screen and exit the screen over and over and over until we got a bonus roll big enough like this one to build the character that we wanted. So this will be my fighter. And we'll make him a good fighter. He'll be the one that will probably become our lord at some point. Well, what picture do we want? Let's go with this guy name him after me so of course I'm gonna cheese it right I'm gonna keep going for the ah oh, I did it again two fast fingers here we go so we will make a dwarven samurai this time I think and I like how this new version gives you the stats that you need right on the screen Let's give him one more strength and one more vitality. We'll make him a samurai. Good samurai. This is what I was talking about earlier. You see all of the portrait options for the humans here. But when you get down to the other races, it's just male and female. And the little icon in the lower left hand corner there indicates that it's in development. So I expect probably as the months roll by and updates to the games come out, you'll see you know, more options here. All right, so we have now what's going to be a Lord and we have a Samurai. So let's go ahead and make our Thief. So I'm not gonna be greedy and go for 20s and 18s and 19s. Oh, whoa, that was a 28. See? Yeah, I am going to be greedy. Who am I kidding? Let's go ahead and make this our bishop. So, we're going to do 16s for piety and intellect. Give him some health here. Luck. Bump him up to 10. There we go. What was this, a gnome? We made a gnome. There he is. Oh, let's see. Shorty. Give me a 15 or better. Brun boy is back. Yes, you remember Brundorf, don't you? Of course, when we played D&D, &D, Brundorf was a cleric. Oh, yeah, we're going to do a thief now. So We are going to give him some big-time agility and some luck. Now, like I said, I like my thieves a lot of time to be in the front lines. Hmm, that's so tricky, right? Maybe we'll go with the game's recommendation this time and keep him in the back. There we go. Who loved his beer. I know it's a little callous, but I tend to name my characters things like Fighter 1, Fighter 2, Thief 1. 
And so, yeah, I get that. A lot of people do that so they can keep up with what's going on. They'll forget who their characters are if they look at the names. So this is something I want to talk about real quick. Like I mentioned earlier, my thief, I, my plan is for the thief to eventually become a ninja. By, in, by wizardry's defaults, ninjas can only be evil. Now, there are ways around that. Um, for example, you can be a ninja and then have your alignment changed later on. We've seen that in the Japanese game that I played a few months back. Um, there is another way, and that is to find an item called a thieves dagger. And when you use that item, your thief will change to a ninja. And I could be wrong, but I, I seem to remember that it doesn't matter what your alignment is when you use that item. So I could be a neutral thief and use it and become a ninja. The reason that's important is because by default, good characters cannot be in parties with evil characters. Um, again, there's a workaround for that too, but it's really a hassle, it's a pain. And so with that whole thieves knife plan in mind, we're gonna go neutral. And of course, it's a halfling this time around because of copyright reasons trademark reasons. So what are we going to name this this little halfling here? How about Frodet? I like it. Even if I named them like that, I would still be sad when they died. So I guess that's an aspect of it I never thought of. If you name it Fighter 1, Fighter 2, you're not going to be super sad when they pass away. I don't know, I would be. If it's a level 20 character, I'm going to be sad. If it is lost. Ah, I keep skipping. All of these nice rolls. But for, this is going to be my, my mage, and I'm happy. Oh, look at that roll. That is crazy. 29. I think 30 or 35 is as high as it goes, and it's exceptionally rare. Max is 29 the max. See, I never played the 2E version. I only played the Mac and the DOS and the NES version. So I got a max roll here, and I'm going to waste it on a mage. So we'll just go ahead and go full 18 intellect for this fella. Make him a little less squishy. And make him a lucky boy. Nothing wrong with a healthy, fast mage. No, there's not. He doesn't need the strength, though. And we made an elf, right? What are we going to call this guy, huh? Let's go with a traditional name. I would be sad when I lose a level two, get too attached. All right, so we got one more, and that's gonna be the uh, priest or cleric. That'll be a gnome also. So we've gone really nice rolls for everybody. We'll, we'll stick with the 18 for him, which is still a very nice roll. So this guy's going to be doing some melee damage. So we are going to give him a little bit of strength, a little bit of vitality and agility here. I did make a bishop, right? I think so. I can't remember. I'll have to check. Pretty sure I did. So we've got a gnome. Yeah, we did, because I called him Shorty. What are we going to call our female priest? Oh, let's see. I don't know why, but Wilma sounds like a good name. All right, so I think we've got these guys are dead and in the maze. And this will be cool because when we get to the spot where they died, I'll show you. We'll be able to find them. Of course, I have a full party, so I can't bring them back. But So we have a human fighter. Elf Samurai. We have a bishop, a thief, a mage, and a priest. So we're ready to rock and roll. 
So we go to the tavern, and this is where we build the party. I think we'll put Rundorf in the front, Kyler, and I'm going to go ahead and we'll do the priest in the front. I'm hearing like two two sounds here. I'm hearing the music and then some flute music. Is that coming from the tavern, I wonder? So, before we rush right into the, the maze, we have to be mindful of something. These characters are probably naked. Yes, no items. But we do have some some money. So we have to equip them. I think we got the starting gold a little screwy. I'm hearing reports. You might need to dip into the dungeon and back out to pool your gold to get equipped. Hmm, okay, let's do that. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, so in this version, are you saying that when you leave the maze and come back to town, it automatically pulls the gold? Interesting. Is the gold there, just split between the characters? That is so. Okay, that is neat. Buy item, sell item. So that's a cool little... I, I think I understand why you've done that. That's a cool little um, enhancement. Because a lot of times when you're coming back to town, it's going to be to resurrect characters, which can be pricey. And if that money is, you know, spread across, you know, characters, it can be a pain. One of our design philosophies is anything that would more or less... Anything that you would more or less always do, we made happen automatically. I always pull gold when I go into the shop. So, I totally get that idea. So, Brundorf is a samurai. So, I'm having to go off memory here because I don't think... What do we have? What item would Kyler like to buy? I see. Okay, so I can shift between the characters this way. Just as a filter. Oh, okay, I like that. That's really cool. I like to see it all, though. Very nice. Yeah, so your enhancements are really cool. I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. So Kyler is, or Brundorf is our samurai. So we're going to go with a long sword for him. We are going to go with. Chain mail for him. Can we afford a helm? I think we probably can. Let's do it. Oh, I did that for the wrong character. Okay. Well, so be it. So we'll do a chain mail for Brundorf and a helm for Brundorf. So Kyler needs a weapon. He's a fighter. I think I can afford another longsword. Wilma's a priest. So we're going to go for Mace or Flail. Plus 3 to hit 1d7 damage. Plus 2 to hit 2d3 damage. So we'll go for a Mace. And a Leather Armor. We have Frodette here. We'll do a Dagger. Leather Armor. Probably should have bought Chainmail for Wilma. Shorty is our bishop, right? I cannot recall. I think they can use a mace. Leather armor. Merlin will get a staff and robes. I probably screwed up and bought the wrong thing for somebody. We still have 355 gold. So let's get a shield for... Cancel. For Wilma. Let's get a large shield for Brundorf. 
and a large shield for Kyler. And I think we're good enough to go out. We have to remember to equip it. Trying to figure out where to do that. Edit character, maybe? Nope. Well, I, we can do it in the maze, I know that. I thought there, there should be a way I can inspect my character here, no? Alright, well, let's go to the maze. And we'll fix it. So we go to camp, here we are. Inspect character. There we go. All right, so everybody's equipped. And we're back to it. I'm loving loading screens as well. Yes, me too. I would love to know the inside baseball on how Digital Eclipse got the rights to this. Because from my understanding, the first uh, five Wizardry games have been locked in uh, licensing hell for many years. Because the properties have changed hands over time. And I'm sure this is exaggerated, but I've heard that at some point even the various developers who had rights to the wizardry name weren't even sure who owned what. Well, I can't say a lot, but everyone has the right of it. It was not easy. I can imagine, I know when Surtek went out of business, uh, things were tricky. Not to mention, um, this is a cool little fun story. Um, I don't remember how long ago this was, 10, 20 years, maybe longer than that, but somebody bought an abandoned storage unit uh, that used to belong to Surtech and found all kinds of concept art and, and just various promotional materials for some of the later Wizardry games. I would have gone completely crazy to be able to dig through that stuff. So I have to be extra cautious because remember this time the characters are level 1, not level 2. Somewhere on the internet, Saddlecat, I saw pictures of some of that stuff from that storage unit. I'll see if I can find that again and show it to you. The end of the original Wizardry franchise was very tumultuous. So much weird stuff going on there. Oh, they're not undead. My bad. Okay. We are going to try to... Oops put them to sleep. We'll see how it goes. One fell asleep. One's better than none. Wilma's in trouble. We need to heal her. So I don't think any of them are asleep anymore. So we'll burn one more spell point and try it again. All right, so that was better. We had three fall asleep. Ah, oh, Wilma is down. So, when a character is down, you go to the town. He thinks it's a trapless chest. He might be right. 
So we are going to hightail it back to town. We should visit the Temple of Camp back in town. I like that. That's so cool. To see if they can resurrect our fallen. Thank you, devs, for putting gamepad um, support in it from the beginning. I have no qualms with playing on a keyboard, but these games typically uh, are kind of rough to play on the keyboard compared to games these days. Hotkeys are not as popular as they used to be. All right. Oh, good. I was expecting a higher price to bring her back. Resurrection successful. So one thing I miss is the old wizardry games would give you a little drum roll of suspense when they were resurrecting characters. The murmur, che, murmur pray, chant, invoke, I believe it was, is what would come on the screen. We will be ro rolling out improved mouse and keyboard support with our next minor update. Fantastic. That's awesome. A lot of people would probably love to play this with mouse and keyboard. I'm really interested to see how that how that works. Oh, that's a good point. I'll make sure we restore the temple suspense. Thank you. That's fantastic. People love that whole because that's really how I used to feel about it. You would sit there and it would have pop on the screen one word at a time. And it was like every word was either closer to the resurrection or the failure, which can be catastrophic. So what we're going to do here is you're looking and you're saying, well, Wilma is down to one hit point. So shouldn't we pay money at the end to bring her back, to bring her health back? And the answer is, like I said earlier, I try not to do that because traditionally the way the game would work is that the rooms that heal you would age you faster. So I would heal spell points at the end and then come down to the maze, heal my characters that way, like I just did, go back, and rest one more time. I do play it on the mouse and keyboard a little rough. So when I first started this the other day, just poking around, um, I was using the keyboard only. I didn't know the mouse was even an option. And um, it, it's doable, but very doable, especially if you played the old games where you had the arrow keys and then a handful of hotkeys on the keyboard. Um, but the controller is just much more intuitive because of the way everything is laid out. If you were playing with the old graphics, it wouldn't be at all. So just Wilma rests. All right, and... So, is there a way that I can just change and spec roster? I guess I can't sort them until I get to camp. Because I don't see a way to do that here. So, into the maze we go, and then I'll, ref I'll fix the party uh, layout. All right, open party options, remove. I don't want to remove from party. Change position, here we are. Oh, okay, that's cool. All right. Confirm position so that we get right where we want to be. Perfect. All right, so check this out. I left and came back into the maze, and the map is reset. So I want to test something here. I wonder now if I cast the map spell, Duma Pick, if my map comes back. I'm curious. Was that a priest spell? I don't recall. Do I not? I don't have it yet. Okay. Yes, I don't have Duma Pick yet. So I need to level up another level. That'll be interesting to see how that works. So, bear with me, and I apologize, but this first little bit is going to be a grind, a slow grind.
because we have to get strong enough to venture deep into the maze. I love the health meter above the monsters. That is very helpful. Oh no, I'm perfectly happy watching all this. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. I'm not the best Twitch streamer, y'all. I'm going to tell you that now. But I'll try to keep it entertaining and relevant with conversation. I am far from the Twitch celebrity. My website is my main focus, not streaming. So total EXP gained, okay. Inspect the chest, we think it's a trapless chest. I always pick something, I think I have no choice really. I absolutely love hearing your thoughts. What your thoughts are on this and the stories you tell. So I looked away, unfortunately, and I missed whatever the loot was from the chest, if any. I don't think there's a console that I can go back and check. So I'm just going to inspect. I don't think I found anything. So. Not this early in the game, anyways. 70 gold. Thank you, Saddle Cat. Bah. Ow. Bah. Oof. I think it used to just say ouch in the old days. Orcs. We have orcs here. Shorty out of spell points already? That's not good. Alright, so I got two sleeping orcs. Okay, so he is still asleep. Okay, cool. Very nice. Gas bomb. I was going to say that seemed like a more advanced trap for level one. Alright, so I'm running back to town to recover spell points. Because right now it is not about progress in the maze, it is about progress of the characters. to do that so Wilma needs so again I just can't help but feel like there's got to be some way I can cast a spell in town it's been a long time since I played and perhaps I can't no I guess not okay Because we don't venture unless we're at 100% health this early in the game. And that spell didn't even bring her full. Okay. One more time. Bear with me. Go back up to rest her spell points. We did, right? Yep, there we went. Okay. All of these erroneous clicks I'm doing are hurting her vim. Hello, I'm here because I was curious about how it plays personally. I played only Wizardry 8 and loved it, but this seems a lot different. So yes, Wizardry 8 and Wizardry 1 are worlds apart in difference. There's, when you talk about the classic Wizardry games, there's you can break them into two categories. Wizardry 1 through 5, 
which were traditional uh, wireframe maze games, and then Wizardry 6, 7, and 8, which was Surtek's second generation of Wizardry. Very graphical, colorful. Um, the party was lined up on each side of the screen. Um, this game looks nothing like the original Wizardry when you look at it with all of these enhancements here. Um, but yeah, huge difference. Wizardry 8 is a fantastic game. Wizardry 1 is a fantastic game, but they are very different. Um, but you'll see some similarities the longer you watch. Plus, Wizardry 8 had outside environments and everything else. This is strictly walled-in dungeon right here. David W. Bradley was the uh, developer, main, main programmer for Wizardry uh, 6, 7, and 8. He had his hand in Wizardry 5 as well. I, he Really, he was the developer for that too, or I should say the programmer for that, with a little help from Robert Woodhead, but he was still going off of their core, I guess, I don't want to call it an engine, but the framework for the original games, where for 6, 7, and 8, well, 6 and 7, uh, that was all him. I don't even know if he did anything with 8 or not. I think he was gone by then, because he made Wizards and Warriors, which was his Wizardry 8. And then Surtek, I don't know who developed 8. In-house group, I don't even know the names of the devs on that. Yeah, looks really good, this one. I agree, it's beautiful. Beautiful. It's going to hurt my heart if we don't get at least the first three Wizardry games in this treatment. Um, I would donate a hundred dollars to charity if we ever see a, f a modern version of the fourth game. It's so obscure and so wacky that I don't think most people would find it enjoyable. But I, I would love to play it. If they go by popularity, the fifth game would uh, probably sell well as well. People love Wizardry 5 from its Super Nintendo release. Was the story really out there? So Wizardry 4 is really the direct sequel to this game. You, you remember at the beginning we got that message about the wizard Wordna who was holed up in the maze. Wizardry 4, you play as Wordna, who somehow escapes death, and he is down in the very bottom of the maze. It was some... Re re I want to say it was deeper than level 10. I, I don't know. I can't remember. Um, but you play as Wordna, and he has to recruit monsters. He summons monsters into the party. So all the monsters that we're seeing in this game, the majority of them are potential party members in Wizardry 4. And instead of encountering monsters he encounters um, players so you fight against players and well, the cool thing about that game is when they were developing it the developers asked fans to send in their save discs their physical discs sent in the mail to them so they could pull player stats off of the save games so potentially you might play Wizardry 4 and stumble across your own party that was so cool to me and these characters, well not these characters, but the ones that were in the sample party, Hawkwind and Prospero and all of them, they were um, the boss fights in Wizardry 4 because they were the, the characters that were on the disc by default. Yeah, it was really cool, but it was also extremely challenging. Um, there were some puzzles in the game, I'm not going to lie to you, I would not figure out on my own. Like how to beat the game properly and achieve the true ending never would have figured that out. I don't care what you say. If you didn't read it in a guide, or if you weren't some of the people on, um, oh, what was the platform? Uh, it wasn't America Online. It was um, Prodigy, I think. There was a wizardry group, discussion group on Prodigy, and a bunch of gamers would get together, and they f that's how they were able to beat it. They figured it out themselves through, like, crowdsourced information, which is fantastic. But I would have never in a million years figured it out on my own. Ah, 
Oh, uh, Wilma's down again. Watch. She's, she won't survive this fight, I'm afraid. All right, well, she got rid of one kobold, though. But she... I'm not taking any chances. We're going to heal her. And we are going to try to burn one of these guys. Heck, we're just going to go all out. Yes, yeah, so you were talking about what made Wizardry 4 different. You started at the bottom of the maze and worked your way up to town. And at the very end of the game, this was the coolest part for me the first time I played it, is you're in town. Like, you get to go to Baltek's trading post, the, the shop, and fight Baltek the dwarf. You get to go to the Temple of Kant, and I think that might be where the game actually ended. Um, it, you get to go to the shops and like wreak havoc on all of the innocents. And Brundorf is down. Poor Brundorf. He never stood a chance. So I'm seeing this flashing icon on Frodette next to her, her level. So I'm feeling like that's a visual indicator that she's leveled up and I can go to town and level her up. I don't know that for sure, but I, I can't imagine what else that might be. It's an up arrow coming from her level, so... Guess where I'm going after this fight. That is indeed correct. Alright. So. Trapless chest, she thinks. 60 gold. All right, so let's get out of here. Run back to town before we get in a fight. Bring Brundorf back from the dead. Da, da, da. Well, let's yeah, let's go do that first. Two fifty. Now you see where all of your gold goes in wizardry. So I've got three that are ready to level up now. Let's do that. Oops, not the training ground, but the inn. Kyler will stay. We can stay at the stables and level up. Oh, so look here. I get to assign my attribute points. That's awesome. In the old game, it was random. Uh, they put it anywhere the game decided to, which sometimes made zero sense. I'm a fighter, right? So naturally, I want my skills to go to strength or vitality. Um, but all too often the game would throw your fighters bonuses in piety or intellect. Um, what used to kill me so much is when I was trying to change class to a lord, for example. Um, and I would just be like one stat, one stat would be one number off from where I wanted it to be. And I'd level up and it would throw it somewhere else. Now I can put it where I want it. That's excellent, excellent. So Kyler is going to be my lord one day so I'm going to put these bonuses in places that would benefit him in that regard which again if you don't like this you can turn it off in the options and have the old school way of doing things so Frodet is our thief her agility is good let's go ahead and bump her up to 18 give her a little more vitality and a little more strength Merlin here is our wizard. His intellect is matched, maxed out. Let's give him a little more help in the health department. A little, lot more actually. All right. So Wilma needs to go to the stables to recover. So the shorty. Let's heal up, and we'll continue our venture into the maze. Going to camp. Say hi, Wilma. Let's heal Brundorf. We're probably going to need to heal Brundorf more than once. Oops, 
I mismatched that button. Hit the wrong button and wasted a spell. Does Merlin have any healing spells yet? Oh, looky here. Divine spells. Okay. No, he does not. But what does he have? Duma pick. And as I theorized, I like that so much. I like that so much because when I cast the map spell now, it restores anywhere on the level I visited. The way Dumapik used to work back in the day, um, if I remember right, is when you cast it, it would simply give you your coordinates. Like right now, I'm on zero, one. You see the white arrow there? Um, so if I was mapping on graph paper and I got turned around or lost, I'm like, crap, where am I? I could cast Dumapik, see where I am, make it on my paper map. Um, this is a much more modern way of doing things. Um, I like the fact that it doesn't give you the whole map. Some people would probably scream for that. But um, I disagree with that because this way I can see where I have been, which is fair, right? So if I was mapping it myself, I would already have this. Um, this is the best implementation that I've seen of a visual map in, in Legacy Wizardry. I, I love it if the devs are listening. Wow, fantastic. This is the way it should work. Are the dungeons randomly generated? No, the dungeons are not randomly generated in Wizardry. Um, in any of the Wizardry games that I've seen, except for... I think there is a Japanese game where the last level is random. Don't, don't quote me on that, but I think that's the case. Um, I'm trying to remember what game that is, and I, I could be wrong about that. I might be thinking of a different game. But no, they are not procedurally generated like Diablo used to be or anything like that. If they were, think about it, if they were, you wouldn't have been able to map back in the old days. Um, and plus, I just don't know that a PC from the early 80s could have done that very well. But that would be cool. I would love to see a Wizardry-like game or even a future Wizardry game with procedurally generated dungeons. Um, Wizardry Online, of course, did not have them random, but it was cool nonetheless. That was a game that should have thrived. Oops, not the temple. I want to go to the maze. So yes, there was a wizardry online at one point. Last Dumapit cast. That's cool. Um, big in Japan for a long time. Came to the U.S. And where it went bad was Sony Online Entertainment operated the game in the U.S., and really got greedy with it. Um, it had an in-game shop, a cash shop, and uh, it still makes me mad to this day. You could buy items that would resurrect your character uh, if it was lost. It, basically, the whole marketing of the game was, this is an MMO, and you can lose your characters. Permadeath, right? But... If you just would spend a little money in the cash shop, that was probably not going to happen. I covered that game extensively when it came out. The devs from Sony were nice enough to um, give me a perpetual uh, membership. And I played it until, it until they pulled the plug on it. It only lasted a year in the US. And now, even today in Japan, it's it's gone. It's shut down. So in making new game with new party, you already know the layout of the dungeon. You already know it. Um, oh, so if you mapped it uh, and you lost a party, then yes, you personally would know the layout because you still have your maps, which is not a bad thing. It's a good thing because a lot of times when people make a new party, it's to go back and retrieve their old party. So knowing where their bodies rest is very helpful. 
Plus, I mean, if we're being honest, if you had to make a new party every time um, you, or if you had to, if the map was different every time you made a new party, yeah, it would be, it would have been bad news. All right, what are we doing here? Okay, change position. So this, it's taking me some getting used to the the change changing the, the party layout is not as intuitive as I I would expect it to be. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just way different than how some of the other Japanese wizardry games uh, worked. All right, so oh cool, so I can see because I casted Duma Pick. I can see that's ah, so cool. But the mini map here. Wow, guys, that is awesome. I think that's, you know, I'm just going to cast it because I can't I can't stress that enough. I like that so much. All right, so I believe it was here somewhere that my last party wiped. I don't really intend to recover them, but I wanted to show you what it looks like when you find them. Now, I'm, it used to be you'd have to know where they were. I surprised the monsters. And then you would have to search for them. Let's see, we're, we're doing much better already. Now that we've leveled a bit. I don't see a search option in this game or in this version. I can't remember where I was when I lost those characters. Was it this room? Slimes. Creeping cruds, maybe? Bubbly slimes. Hmm, let's just see what happens. So I'm not sure why we're just hanging here. What is the issue? Toggle health bars. Oh, cool! Look at that. See, I'm see, I'm learning things as I play. I like the health bars being on. It tells me which monster in the party is weaker and which one I should be targeting next. We should head back up. I could use some rest to train up my ability. So did he level again? So I'm hitting A, but I can't dismiss his message. Why is that? I'm going to wash the dishes, but I'm still here. All right, Saddle Cat, you do that. All right, so it's the screen, the feedback on the screen is telling me I should be able to press A to dismiss that message. It's not working. So that might be a bug. Let's see if it goes away. It should go away when I leave the maze, right? I would think so. Yeah, no, no problem. Don't apologize. I knew what to expect when I bought the game and it said early access in big letters. Let's shorty. This is not my thief. This is my priest, right? Or my... This is my bishop. 
This is my bishop. Yes. All right. So stables for Merlin. Stables for Wilma. Everybody else is at full health. All right. So I can't wait to see if Shorty's learned any new spells. Not yet. All right. So let's go ahead and cast a Duma pick. And everything down here has been covered. Let us. Oh, I'm not ready for the big baddie on this level. So there's not really boss fights per se in wizardry except for the final fight but there are some encounters that are always there and this level plays host to one of them a very infamous monster infamous because it's so unusual it's a monster that you almost never hit and it almost never hits you and the fight drags on and on as a result. I'm talking about Murphy's Ghost who is in the lower uh, right hand corner of this level. But the cool thing about Murphy's Ghost is the experience points that he gives you are out of this world. So it's worth grinding him once you reach a certain level. I think I usually would hit him around 4th third or fourth level I can't it's been so long I can't remember might even be later than that because when he does hit he hurts cool little tidbit about Murphy Murphy's ghost rather is he is named after one of the college friends of uh, the developers, uh, he was a beta tester for the original Wizardry. The way they did this is uh, when they were building their game, they would give it to their friends and let their friends put it through its paces. And um, somebody named Murphy was one of the guys who tested the game early on. And so they immortalized him by naming a monster after him. We should head back up. I could use a rest at the end to train my abilities. So it went away for Brundorf. Something must have uh, something must have glitched when um, I leveled the last guy. So we are heading back to town because I want him to level up. Brundorf's a samurai. Samurai's level slower than some of the basic jobs or classes I should say you can tell I've played Final Fantasy for too long with my lingo alright let's give Brundorf a little agility and a little more health Wilma also needs to level up again All right, Wilma. Must destroy all points. There we go. Yeah, let's let's do that. Okay. Back to the maze we go. Love the loading screens. Let's see if Wilma got any new spells at her disposal. Kalki. Minus one AC bonus for party for encounter. Now some people may be confused by that terminology, minus one AC bonus. What does that mean? Am I losing armor class? Wizardry came out in a time where advanced Dungeons and Dragons and Dungeons and Dragons was the de facto rule set for um, RPGs. And in those early versions of D&D, the lower your armor class, the better. So when it says a minus one AC bonus, basically that's a good thing, not a bad thing.
having an armor class of minus one would have been a fantastic armor class for an AD&D character to have. Of course, that doesn't lower your armor class to negative one. It's just, okay, there's something up here. I'm trying to remember what it is. I think if I keep going north, there's an event up here. I could be wrong. I might be confusing that with another room. All right, we got five orcs. These orcs are giving me a bad feeling. Oh, I didn't rest Merlin's hit points, I'm afraid. Or his spell points, rather. All right, that went better than I expected. So despite having played these game, this game a thousand times, I don't have the layout of every um, room memorized. Uh-oh. There we are. Alright, so north bound we go. Where are we at here? Oh, so it only shows you the last. Okay, well, that's that's cool. I was shocked how much I remembered. Not everything, but some pretty solid broad strokes of a few floors anyway. So I could probably tell you the first floor, the majority of it. I could probably walk you to the elevator to the fourth floor. And maybe once I've done it once, I could even get you to the tenth level. You know what? Let me just do something here. Who has it? I saw it earlier. Do I not have a Milwa spell? Not yet, huh? Interesting. Pretty sure there is ways into these rooms here. Even if I have to teleport. That could be rock, though. All right, so I'm not paying attention, and I entered a fight without a character at full hit points. So, we will attack. She will heal. Kyler here. That didn't do much. Back to town we go. Oops, wrong way. I'm all over the place.
So I have this handy dandy map right above my camera, right? And I've also got this. But imagine playing this back in the day when it looked like that. You see that square up at the top there in the upper left? That is what the game used to look like. So imagine playing this without making a map yourself. See how the quarters shift as my perspective shifts? See, I messed around and got in a fight. But this is why the game was so, like, just mysterious. Because there wasn't a fancy wall. There weren't fancy maps on the screen that you could follow. You had to map it, or you would get lost, because every step looked like the step before it and the step past it. What was the year of the release of Wizardry 1? 1981 on the Apple II. And releases continued on other platforms as they went on. Um, I remember talking with Robert Woodhead, the main programmer of the game, and he said that he had eventually, like, programmed himself a moddable version of the game, making it easier to port to other platforms. Um, which is a concept just so far ahead of its time, in my opinion. The Apple II version is one I've actually never played. Um, like I said earlier, I started with a Macintosh. Um, I've heard that the Apple II version may have been a little harder and that he they dialed it back a bit. I don't know how true that is, unfortunately. I can't really speak to that. There's a notorious uh, glitch in this version of the game, though, that serves as a cheat of sorts. Um, I'm curious to see if it's here. I'm not at the point where I can really do that right now, though, but I don't want to say any more. Spellcasters, Wilma, let her rest. Shorty will rest. Let's go heal them up. I think my favorite Robert Woodhead anecdote is when asked in an interview what he was thinking behind the second scenario requiring imported characters from the original. <laughs> he responded, well, you have to understand that no one had made a sequel before. So, yeah, um... They looked at, at the first, well, the second Wizard game specifically as not really a second game, but a second chapter. So when Wizardry 2 came out, it was designed to be played by people who had already conquered the first game. So the encounters, the, the trips and tracks, uh, the trips, tri tricks and traps in the game were all designed to be for someone with that veteran mindset. So you actually would move characters from the first game to the second game. You would take your first game save disc and import those characters to Wizardry 2, which I thought was just fantastic. And I'm still upset to this day that not many games do that, if hardly any. Um, the third Wizardry game, of course, takes place many, many years later. You can still move your characters to Wizardry 3, but they are ancestors of the original heroes, so to speak. Um, but you could still do it, and I loved it. That is such a cool idea. Yeah, I agree. Um, and a lot of people seem to think so. So you may know that Square Enix recently released a remake of Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII Remake. And uh, it's a game that's going to come out in like three chapters. And so everybody was expecting that when the second chapter comes out here next year 
you would be able to take your Final Fantasy VII Remake save game and just pick up where you left off. And Square Enix really upset people when they said last week, no, that's not how it's going to work. Um, you'll be starting the game fresh without your save data. And I understand why they're doing that. They're doing that to make the game accessible to people. But at the same time, you spend all that time you know, maximizing your character for Wizardry, or pardon me, for Final Fantasy VII Remake, and you don't get the benefit of having that maxed out character start the second chapter. So if Digital Eclipse actually does decide at some point to make a Wizardry 2 Remake, I would really hope that they stick with the tradition of allowing people to import their characters. That kind of thing is not as easy these days probably as it used to be. But it sure would be nice. Now of course there's exceptions to that. The Nintendo version didn't let you do that because it couldn't, right? You can't move data between Nintendo cartridges. So when you play Wizardry 2 on the NES um, it's rebalanced for a new party. So it's not the end of the world, but it would really be a nicety. Oh, we have some new spells. Dilto. Makes the monsters blind. Sopic. Makes your characters harder to hit. I love that, that they kept the classic spell names. Do my other characters? Do we have any new spells? Does Wilma have any new spells? No, not yet. Yeah, nowadays it would be a potential suicide for devs because the target audience would shrink too much. This is very true. Kawhi Panda says, if, can't stress that enough, very big if, but we absolutely would. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand the hesitancy to even say if, right? Um, because if you say that, too many people see it, they're going to take it as you saying, well, we're going to do this. And you're not saying that. All right, so we're going to step in here, and you guys will see something cool. Um, but I can't imagine in any other way, uh, Panda, because, I mean, the framework's there, right? You're using the original code base is what they say. So you look around, we see no walls. There's a wall to my left. You, I know because I can bump into it. And if you look, the map doesn't know that. The mini map doesn't know that until I bump into it. So I'm bumping into it on purpose. Because I want to see those walls. Watch this. No? Is my memory failing me? Hmm. There's an event up here. We'd have to find a way to make it work for importers and newcomers. It's a tough design challenge. Uh, yeah, I totally get that. Um, I can't imagine releasing a modern Wizardry 2 without the option to start fresh, right? Like you'd almost have to. Um, the only way around it would be to, instead of making it a unique release, make it a DLC chapter for this game, right? Which is one, one way you could do it. Um, but if you did it as a standalone release and gave people the option to import or the option to start fresh, you'd have a lot of balancing you'd have to do. You'd You'd almost have to make two different balances of the game, um, which is not impossible, but it'd be probably more work than you would have uh, with a simple, you know, port. Thanks for the follow, Old Wally. I really appreciate that. What's up? Not much. 
Thanks for watching the stream. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop it in the chat. I'll do my best to answer. I can answer lots of questions about the legacy game, but I am still learning and uncovering things in this version here. Here we are. And what I expected is not here. What am I looking at here? There used to be something in this room. Would you be making two versions? Would be would ye would be making two versions of the game even possible? Yes. Now, I know what's supposed to be in this room. I th I think, right? I'm not use elevator was this the elevator this is not where I remember the elevator yes no it is this is where I remember the elevator being what I'm looking for is somewhere else I almost want to refer to my old maps play this on the Apple II many moons ago just saw this release on Steam. Well, hang tight because I want to show you something. You weren't here at the beginning of the stream. And as soon as this fight's over, I'll show you. See that? There is your Apple IIe version of the game, right there. You can leave it on the screen. I want to check it out. Looks cool. So, the old game is running. This is. I don't want to speak for the devs, but I feel like this is an elaborate wrapper to the Apple IIe version. Because... There we go. This is what I was looking for. A strange glow seems to emanate from this room. In the center, a smallish man in a long robe turns towards the party and shouts, Be gone, strangers. He then begins waving his hands and intones words, Mapiro, Mahama, Diromat. And where am I going? back to town. We, what we have here is a shortcut back to town. Which is why this exists in the game. But w when I was 11 years old playing Wizardry for the first time and we stumbled into that room, I was um, blown away. Like That was the first encounter with a non-monster I had in the game. And I'm like, who is this guy? What is he doing here? Is this part of the story? What is going on? And it totally like, I'd get hung up on that. I'd be like, I want to know who this fella is? Is this Trevor? Uh, who is this? You know, there's no real answer to that. But um, it's so fun to find little things like that in wizardry, especially when you stumble upon them by accident for the first time. The way I could see it work would be either you import your old characters or you start with a number of set leveled characters that would match somewhat where they would be if you completed the first one, something like that. A non-gamer, that's a good point. You know, probably, honestly, what I would do, because I get what Panda's saying, that's not... Doing it the way that Surtek did it back in the day is not a very friendly way to do it today, with gamers being such a huge, huge um, market like it is now. Um, you would have to have that option for somebody to play it fresh off without having to import something. Um, what I could imagine doing, perhaps, is I'm just going to give a spoiler. When you beat this game, when you beat Wordna and you return to town, you get a little symbol in your character sheet that shows um, that you did that you beat the game. And that's, that's all. It's a little chevron that shows up next to your character's name. So at the very least, it'd be cool if you have to start Wizardry 2 with a new party, at least let that chevron, the, the character's name and class and chevron move over from the save data, even if you have to start fresh with stats. Um, a nice little bonus would be being able to have that lord and have that ninja in the party from the get-go as level 1 characters. Um, that'd be one way to do it. That'd be a decent trade-off, I think. You would choose classes and a bit more, but to get the full experience, you would need to play the first one. Yeah, exactly. 
graphics look good. What's your assessment so far? Um, so my honest assessment is it's beautiful. Um, I'm curious about so many things. I've not left the, the first level yet. Um, so I'm curious to see as I venture deeper into the dungeon, does the artwork change? Does the, the dungeon look different at lower levels? Um, like the bricks, the color, that sort of thing. Um, I hope it does. I can't wait to see if it does. Um, so far I'm impressed with the monster art, the animations. Um, my biggest problem with the game thus far is just the UI a little bit. Um, it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but um, I'll, I'll show you. Right now I'm about to go to the inn to rest my character, right? Switching these characters is easy. I hit the trigger, but I'm wanting to hit the shoulder button. That's, that's a me thing, right? That's not a, a bad design thing. It's just my personal expectation. And then here I go to the stables and I'm assigning Wilma's my priest, right? So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll show you in a second. So let's just say I'm here just to charge his spell points. I get this message, Merlin needs a thousand experience points when she's next level. By default, I'm wanting to hit the A button to dismiss that message. Um, but instead, I hit it twice and boom, he's hit the stables twice, which is consume some vim. So. I'm hurting my character every time I hit that, that button. Um, I would like to see the devs add a confirm button there so I can hit it and know that I've dismissed that message. Again, they didn't do anything wrong, but I'm so used to every prompt on my screen having um, a confirmation, a physical confirmation required that I'm doing it by default and it's having a detrimental effect on my character. What is Vim? So. Vim is kind of a replacement for age, is what I'm being told. Um, it is a slightly new mechanic. You do not have to use it. There is an option in the game that lets you make the game entirely old school. Um, they're saying Vim is better. It lets you understand your character's age, how age affects your character more. I have not researched it. I've not dug into it. I cannot answer that question fully. If the devs are watching still, maybe they could chime in and give a better explanation than me. Um, but a non-gamer says, some people would complain that they would have to click it to make it go away. You're absolutely right. Um, but still, I'd be curious to know how many gamers are doing what I'm doing and accidentally hitting that button too many times. Because I feel like I want to do that because other games have trained me to do that. Um, again, not a poor design choice by the developers, but something that I just noticed. It's functionally equivalent to age, just framed a different way. I'm going to look into it because I'm curious if there is any difference. Um, the terminology There, there has to be some difference, I feel like. Alright, so I've healed my characters. We're going to go back up and we're going to level up Shorty. And I have taken a note that I should add a confirm to the end. I did it before you said. You were probably watching me hit that over and over again. Um, maybe we can make it an option. Agree. Make it an option. Because like a non-gamer said, people are going to complain. This is an unnecessary click. Shorty is my... Bishop. Yes. Shorty is my bishop. Alright, so Shorty's got his... I would end up sending them to the stables four times before I realized what I was doing. I'm so used to confirming things in games. Yeah, and that's kind of what I'm thinking of too. Almost any prompt on the Xbox or the PlayStation these days has a confirm. Why? I don't know. They just do, and I've been conditioned to do it as a result. Alright, so... And plus... 
part of my problem is it wasn't a month ago I just finished Labyrinth of Lost Souls streaming that game and so my muscle memory is wanting to do things the way that game did things and that is a whole other generation of wizardry games some people would say it's not even a proper wizardry game which I disagree with by the way I think the Japanese games are just as awesome as our games are. Studying the map. My characters are what? I've got a few level 3s, one level 2. As soon as Brundorf hits level 3, I'm going to venture into the dungeon with reckless abandon. What do we got here? Well, maybe the game should block the unnecessary resting twice and display the message like your character is already rested. That is a fantastic suggestion. Well, you can heal in the inn by resting, so that would not work if you're trying to heal. Which isn't the best idea, mind you. Being an older game with such a, a legacy you're going to find a thousand different opinions on how things should work. In the end, I urge the developers to trust their expertise. You can't please all of the people all of the time. Oh, this is bad news. Six, seven, eight monsters, and they surprised me. And they're running away, though. I like how the... Uh, I like how the, they say, peace out, and they run off. Scary fight, or never mind. <laughs> I would love to know what makes the game decide if they're going to run away or not. I don't know if it's random. I don't know if it's based on my level. I've always assumed it was just random. Most likely based on level. I would think so. Like logically that makes sense. But I try to think back to the computing power of the original game. Like how much could he really do with the technology you know, that he was given? Could a game make logical decisions like that? I don't know the answer to that. Uh oh, they have angry fighters. I'm going to run. <laughs> so yeah, a simple... Uh, Greater than, less than, uh, logic might might have worked. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a programmer. I can write the most basic game in basic, and that's it. The extent of my programming was taking uh, games written in basic on the Apple IIe and modifying the code to say dirty and inappropriate things at the school computer lab, and then sitting on the other side of the room and watching kids' eyes wide open and jaw slack when they would see this terrible stuff on their screen and the teacher coming over getting very upset give me a second I'll tell you exactly what it does awesome man thank you now this is a scary fight how am I going to proceed actually So let me look at Wilma's spells. What do we have here? Blesses the party. We're going to Matu. And we're going to Katino. And I'm going back to town after this fight so dang it I did it again so I am going to throw everything I've got in here and let's go ahead and darken the enemy's vision so they will miss us
So this was not near as bad as I thought. But I've got the buffs, right? So this time we'll do a standard fight, fight, fight. Parry, parry, parry format. And we should come out on top. It actually is kind of simple. There's a calculation of your relative strengths, which is the sum of hit dice. If the party is tougher than the enemies, they run 65% of the time, but only if they choose not to cast a spell, breathe, or call for help first. Not all enemies can run. So the darkness spell makes it easier to hit, not you harder, right? So the darkness spell makes it easier to hit. No, the darkness spell, the way I understand it, puts darkness around the enemies and makes it harder for them to see you. So it makes them harder for the enemies to hit you. Now there is a spell that makes you harder to hit. That's the the, the Dilto spell, the glass spell maybe? I have to I have to look. I, it's been so long. What's the real world difference between those two spells? I don't know. Probably not much. One might be your armor class versus their attack roll, perhaps. Might be the difference. Does it say they receive AC penalty, though? I'll check the... Uh, we'll look at the description here in a second. So let's look. So Sh Porphic Shield gives me an armor class bonus. Same with uh, Kalki right here, right? And we'll look at the other spells for the mage here in a second. So Dilto is darkness. Envelopes, envelops a group of monsters in darkness, which reduces their ability to defend against your attacks. Okay, so it's not an attack penalty on them. It is a defense penalty on them. So it raises their AC and makes them easier to hit. There's your difference. So yeah, I love the fact that the descriptions of the spells are in the game now instead of in a booklet or in an FAQ somewhere. I like that they kept the old name. I like that they give a modern translation of the name. Again, excellent execution, in my opinion. I'm sure you're going to have some old heads get on here and say, we don't want to know what the spells do. We want it just like it used to be. So don't be surprised if you don't hear somebody beg you to have the option to take the modern descriptions out, or the legacy descriptions out of the game. I'm sure someone will ask. That someone will not be me. All of that con comes straight from the menu, including some incorrect info. I like that. I can't think of what you're referring to off the top of my head, but I like it. So this is where I wish I could look up uh, the stats for a lord, because I'm trying to remember what they are. I, I can look them up here if I chose to. Um, I'm pretty sure it was intellect and piety were a bit higher. Something like 15, 12, I can't remember what it was off the top of my head. But I want, oh, Brundorf's my samurai, I just screwed that up. I really want this game so bad. Now's the time to get it, Seto Cat. It is available on Steam. Well, it's only available on the PC. Steam and goodoldgames.com are the only two places I know where you can buy that. Um, I really hope it sells well. I really would love to see console ports. If they could get this game on the console, there would be a whole new audience unlocked. Mark my words. So one thing you may have noticed, there's no option to save this game, right? Um, nowhere in here is there an option to save. That is because the way Wizardry used to work is, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it used to save the game automatically every time you would return to town. Um, 
the first day this came out and I was playing with it a bit privately, I was testing different things. And I don't think that's the way it works in this version. Uh, and I say that because I took my party into a fight, a character got killed, I control alt deleted the game and killed it, restarted the game, thinking that I'd come back to town and all my characters would be alive, but it was not the case, they were already dead. So I don't know if it's saving after every step or after every fight. Um, I'd be curious to find that out. But the game, that's part of what makes the game so challenging, is you cannot cheat the game. There's no save states, right? I can't save the game, open a door. If I lose, reload my save and try again. If I lose, I lose. It's that hardcore. That is a big part of what gave Wizardry its reputation back in the day for being ruthless. There are people that are going to hate that, but there are also people that will love that. See, you see now that we're at level 3. We're getting to the level where things are functional. I can cast enough spells to heal my guys up to max, right? I can survive most fights now. Is there a chance to turn your allies to ashes by revive? Um, there was in the past. Uh, if you try to heal a dead character or resurrect a dead character and it failed, they would be reduced to ash in the original game. And my understanding is all of the original mechanics are the same in this game, with a few exceptions that you can turn off. I did not see anything in the options about um, resurrection, so I guess all of the old hardcore stuff is still there. And of course, if your character is reduced to ashes, and um, the res next resurrection attempt is unsuccessful, that character is lost and gone forever. I don't have Mill Law yet, do I? Yes, I do. Let's cast that. Because I feel like I'm missing some hidden doors somewhere. I'm excited for the challenge of permadeath, even though I know I'm going to suck at it. So it's just like many games from this time frame. You can grind your way past a lot of the challenge. In Wizardry it's a bit harder to do, <clears throat> but it's it's something you can do. I always think back to that South Park episode where they're playing uh, Warcraft and they decide to max out their levels by attacking boars. You can do it, but would you really want to? I functionally grind as a general rule, meaning I will grind enough to just take the edge of the challenge off of my whatever I'm immediately doing. <clears throat> like, I want to be able to explore freely without every single fight being the complete risk of annihilation. Also, can good and evil characters be in the same party? They can with a little work, meaning I can take an evil character, go to the maze, leave the character, go back to town, build a party of good characters, find the evil character, recruit him to the party. I have a mixed party at that point. But you cannot go to the inn or the tavern and add good and evil characters into the party that way. You have to jump through some hoops to make it happen. Also, character alignments can change. If I'm good and I fight friendly monsters that I encounter over time, they will turn bad. Vice versa. I surprise the monsters. Ooh. 
I love the animations. I cannot wait for the October update of the game, which I think is the next big update where they're going to add some more visuals and, and character portraits and things like that. I think I read that even the music in the game may not be 100% complete. Oh, really? Shit, that's not as good to hear. I've killed a lot of friendly monsters. So yes, if you are, if you have a party of good aligned characters and you attack friendly monsters, over time, those monsters or your characters will gravitate towards being evil. Because an evil, a good character would not attack friendly monsters, right? That's the idea. Look at this. Hidden door. So that's cool. In previous iterations of the game, the Milwa spell would just show you the door. In this game, it shimmers. So you still have to pay attention. I love that. That's fantastic. Imagine having a good ninja. So the trick to ninja... Oh, a good ninja is in an alignment. Yeah. Because they're assassins, right? I hear what you're saying. Well... Historically in wizardry, I play evil characters, in this wizardry specifically, because... What is going on here? What am I looking at? Look at this. I've never seen this behavior before. I'm looking and I'm seeing doors all around me. That's odd. I want to see something when this fight's over. Um, but back to what I was saying is I typically play evil characters because there's a handful of items in this game that um, are only can only be used by evil characters and they're some of the best weapons in the game. And so I would play for that min-maxing benefit. I don't remember what I'm looking at here. Was, it, was I... Was I being teleported? What, what was going on? My map in the left hand corner was not map matching what I was seeing. Or am I, am I seeing things? Interesting. What happens if you equip the evil item and turn your alignment to good? So, if a good character equips an evil item it's typically a cursed item, uh, meaning that they cannot unequip it. Um, does that make the item detrimental? I don't recall. I'm sorry. Um, I think perhaps it's not as effective, maybe. I can't remember off the top of my head. But yes, um, cursed items, once you equip them, cannot be unequipped. They have to be removed at the game, at the shop in, the, in town. And when they are removed, if I remember right, they are destroyed. So I really should go to town now and level these characters up. But I'm liking this, this whole area that I'm stuck in. There it is, okay. So I'm not really sure what's going on here because my mini-map on the left is being overwritten. Places I've already been. If your run goes like mine, you'll die trying to figure out how to get out of there. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what's going on. I don't recall anything like this in the the game from back in the day. Let me do a pick again. Did I get teleported? You know what's happening here? I just figured it out. And it's brilliant. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. 
but I believe that I got teleported. And instead of the minimap showing me in a new location, showing me in the correct location, what it's done is it's assuming that I'm mapping this on paper like a person would who doesn't know they've been teleported. So I took a step and instead of being one step forward, I'm all of a sudden down here, but I don't know that. So I'm drawing on the map and I'm overwriting things. That's so cool to me if that's, if that's what the devs have done here because we're going to take another stab at it. People are interpreting it as a bug. Am I right in, in my assumption here that that's what you're doing is you're assuming that people, the mini map is the same as someone mapping manually? Because I, I'm, it took me a second to figure out what was going on, but I think that you draw, yep, you draw what you see where you've walked. I personally like that. Um, in fact, it put a smile on my face when I figured out what you were doing. Um, I would urge you to leave it in if I were you. Um, or at least put a message on the screen giving players a hint that that's what's happening just because um, I personally think that's fantastic. Because it keeps with the spirit of how the original game would work, assuming that you are mapping things on paper. And that is a mistake that I made multiple times as a young person mapping this game on graph paper I would map and map and then I would run into a place that I had already been and be like well that that can't be right that's breaking the rules of the game all right Murphy if I remember right you are here no this is the statue room within the room is a statuette of a strange beast with the body of the chicken and the head of a cat the statue is made of bronze and lies on an onyx pedestal. There are unusual runes on the plaque thereon. The party found a bronze key. So this key is used to access a portion of the map that is otherwise inaccessible, as you might expect. Absolutely not touching the cat chicken. You have to touch the cat chicken. But getting back to what just occurred, um, I can picture you, Panda, sitting there waiting for me to get there to see what I was going to say. Um, I like it. Um, and I think once people figure out what it is, they're going to like it too. Because once I was getting confused, my first instinct was to cast Dumapik to see the map, to see where I was at. And that answered the question, right? Danny says, this is so awesome. And so look, it's happened again. Key inventory. Oh, that's so cool. I like it. Spell points exhausted. Okay, so... We've got to go full on with it now because I don't have the map anymore. And see, my character is confused. The map is... I love it. I can see how it would be confusing. And I could see how people would be lost as I'll get out right here. Because they think they're in one place and they're in a different place. And see, we've already been here. But look at my mini-map. The mini-map is confused because the player would be confused. And it's overwriting itself, but the real map is still here. But where am I on the map? I don't know. So I know where I'm at because I can logically like figure it out, right? But we've got to get out of here. So yeah, I'm having like a, a complete blast with this. I think we're going to try drawing a little more in front of you. See if it clues people in a little more to start anyway. 
Okay. So, me, right now, like, I could pull out my old maps. I mean, I've uploaded them to Steam. I've got them somewhere here, physically. Um, and so I could cheese my way through it, right? But I don't want to do that. I want to have as a pure experience as I can have, right? Which is already tainted by my memory and, and, and expectations. But, like as someone experiencing this for the first time like that thrill of oh my god I'm hopelessly lost I don't have my Duma pick spell the mini map is now a confusing mess when they finally make their way out and, and figure out where they are like that is going to be such a sense of accomplishment and that's what it's really all about like so many times back in the old days when I would navigate my way out of spinner traps and teleports and actually get back to safety it was so rewarding like it was such a good feeling and that's something that is lost so often these days because of walkthroughs and, and things like that I'm wondering about starting over and not grinding the ghost character that ghost gives so much exp it does but to me that's not cheating that ghost is there for a reason all right, so so where? Okay, here we are. This is so crazy. So where are we? Really, where are we? Let's see. Back to the room of confusion. So I'm looking at it from what angle is the question, right? I just came in. I've gone through there. I know I've gone through there. I think this is where I just came from. Maybe not. Okay. I know where I'm at. So I want to go. So what I'm doing now is I'm looking at where I'm at on the screen. This is... The minimap is untrustworthy right now, but my last Duma pick, but I can't see my, so I know I'm like right there. So I want to turn north, run until I hit a wall. So why the thief in the front and not the priest? More AC and all that? Is that what I've done? I think my thief is Frodet in the back here. I usually keep my thief in the front, and I think honestly it's from my own young misunderstanding of the game. I would think that a thief would be a little more hardy and a little more apt to physical combat than a priest. But I think in reality, the armor class of the priest is usually a bit better. Um, I traditionally kept my thief in the front because of that logic, right or wrong. Um, this time around, oh poor Wilma. This time around, I put my priest in the front because that seems to be what people do. And I wanted to give it a try. It's okay, because we're about to one way back to town. If I am where I think I am, that is. This last rascal is tough. Okay, here we go. Alright. So I believe I'm actually facing north. And I believe that I'm now up against that wall at 15 and 9. So I'm going to sidestep, go north. Oh, I was wrong. Where am I? Where am I really? So now I'm lost in the dark. Oh 
Oh boy. And I have no... Nobody else has a Duma pick, right? I'm afraid not. Shorty doesn't have any healing spells yet. Alright, so this is... I haven't been lost on the first level of wizardry for 30 years. So I'm either... Okay, I know where we are now. One soul. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to sidestep until I hit a wall. I am now down at zero nine. Sidestep one, turn, boom, here we are. And that's how you have to do it. I found the, the shortcut spot. You've got your map on the left at this point is wrong because your character is mapping it wrong because they're confused as to where they are. So we're going to resurrect Wilma. She's now 750 to resurrect her. So a huge portion of my gold is going bye-bye. So yeah, what I was saying is the character is confused as to where they are. So the auto map, it's not the game auto mapping, it's the character auto mapping. So when you step on that teleporter and you get teleported to another square in the maze, your character doesn't realize that. So as you take that step forward, they're keeping their map going, even if they're wrong. I think that's clever. Anyone know about my Vim question? Is it different between races? I do not know the answer to that. Um, I know that Panda said that Vim is basically the same as age just renamed a little bit. I'm, I think there's more to it than that. Um, I could be wrong. Nope, it's identical to age. Okay. All right. So I'm going to, to semi-cheat here for a second. I want to look up the class requirements for Lord. Because I don't have them memorized. Because I want to make sure I'm putting my um, stats in the right, right, right thing here. So it used to be strength 15, IQ 12, piety 12, vitality 15, agility 14, luck 15. All right, so I got a ways to go. But let's go ahead and bump that intellect to 12 so we'll get there. Merlin has leveled up. Fifty-eight experience points. Are you killing me? Kidding me? All right. So we are going to heal. Got to be mindful this time of that uh, teleporter. One thing that I used to do is I would label the map when I would discover I had been teleported so I'd know where that spot was. I don't have that luxury this time. We have a lot of healing to do this time. This will be multiple trips to town to recharge Wilma's um, spells here. Love the artwork. Fantastic. Well, 
let's just go ahead and get Brune. That's close enough for me, for Brundorf. Do humans have less vim than other races? Oh, I see. You're asking because humans would age the age difference between a dwarf and a human. I see what you're asking. They do not. So in D&D, &D, right, a dwarf can live to be several hundred years old, whereas a human cannot. I think maybe that's where that question's coming from. All right. It was sort of the impetus. It was confusing to have a 200-year-old human. Got you. Okay. So that makes perfect sense to me. I see why you renamed the stat, and that's all it really is, is a rename, right? So that makes perfect sense to me. Right, and I think everybody else, all the other spellcasters are good. Poor Wilma's going to be like 90 while the rest of the party is 30, right? So let's look, right? I don't know. Inspect roster. So it's not an age anymore, remember. Instead, it is a... She has 97% of her youthfulness, her vim, her her vit vital energy, I guess you could, you could call it. That stat is easier to understand now. When you want to take the age out of it, because like he said, or she said, um, a 200-year-old human doesn't make sense. So we rename the stat to something else. And what it is is a percentage of their vigor, their vim, right? A word not many people are familiar with. But now that I understand that, I think that is a fantastic change. I also like this, 30 kills, 0 deaths, 26 kills, 1 death. So we reframed it as Vim, it is your life energy, it goes down. I see, that is so fantastic. Saving throws, this is great, I never even realized that was something um, in the original game. It makes sense, I guess, I knew there were stats in the background being done dice rolls being done but I never really thought that there were stats like this this is so educational seeing some of these things laid out for the first time All right so one thing that we want to do before we venture back this time is let's talk about upgrading um, some some gear here ball tax trading post Baltech the Dwarf. So one cool piece of trivia, a lot of these names, uh, by the way, um, can't, right? Um, Baltech's Trading Post, Murphy. Um, we talked about Murphy earlier, but Baltech was the name of a dwarf character that uh, was in Robert Woodhead's original D&D &D game while he was in college. Somebody had Baltech the Dwarf, so he added Baltech here as an homage to that friend. And the same with uh, the character of Kant. Um, I asked him once about Gilgamesh. You know, was that somebody's character? And the answer to that, unfortunately, was no. It was just named after the epic, epic of Gilgamesh. But I think that's so cool. Somebody somewhere to this day can sit around the table and say, you know, Baltex Trading Post and Wizardry, that was my D&D &D character. Right, so Brundorf. Brundorf has a longsword, chainmail, a helm, and a large shield. Let's give Brundorf a breastplate. And we will give that chainmail to Wilma. And I think that's all we're going to do right now. And I don't think I can make those changes here. I can inspect my character, right? But I don't think I can do anything with my items here. Oh, I can. Can I? There we go. But I can't trade it here. Does that have to be done in camp? Maybe. Uh, 
I'm very much a sucker for nostalgia. I miss the old uh, music from the Nintendo version of the game. Baltic's Trading Post had... Um, oh. So where'd it go? There it is. Uh, Baltic's Trading Post had a cool little musical theme that I miss hearing. Which I understand licensing issues being what they are. Alright, I think that's got us. Alright, so do we really want to? Well, we have no choice. I want to get down there. So we are going to Is that the wrong character. Where is my Melwa spell? I thought I had it earlier. There it is. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I know I did. I not thinking. So I am going to cast Duma Pick again, though, just because I want my full map back there. All right. So this is what we've mapped. So this is cool. Now that I've cast it, it's putting everything in the proper. Um, context here. So if I level a thief to say 9 and then switch them to a fighter, do they keep their chest trap skills as a level 9 thief? To the best of my memory, they would no longer be able to inspect traps or disarm traps, but I think if you were to make them a fighter and then put them back at thief, the way it used to work is they would retain some of that skill, but they also start at level 1. So I can't remember if you switch back to a previous class if you retain. I never did it, honestly. So now that I've got Milwa up and running, I want to check out some of these spots that I think might have hidden doors. I can't recall off the top of my head. No hidden doors here. No hidden door there. No, sure, I like Thief. Their only point seems to be chests then. So that's the big point of the Thief character. Um... In some of the later games in the series, they could use ranged weapons, which I, I don't believe exist in Wizardry 1. Um, but there's a long-term plan for a thief, and that is ultimately to, to switch it to a fighter, or pardon me, to a ninja. Um, ninjas have the chess skills that thieves have. If you swap a spellcaster to a fighter, they would retain the abilities to cast the spell. Most other abilities are class features. So, like, the thief abilities are no longer available, correct? That was always my understanding. Alright, so no hidden doors. So, we're going to go into the nasty belly of the beast. That is the tricky room tunnel thing up ahead. I don't even need that anymore. I like the orcs. They look so cool.
there's so many quality of life things in this version of the game that I appreciate, like the little level indicator there by Wilma saying that she's ready to level up. Excellent stuff. It does not take away from the game. It enhances the game. Without changing any rules, too. That's the best part about it. All right, so where am I on the map? I am at the end of the hallway here. And when I go through this door, I'm going to be teleported. Right? Not quite yet. Yes, I was. So where did I get teleported to? I'm trying to remember. I have ended up in this room. So I'm facing it. Right, so I know which way I'm facing now. This, I think, is the door for Mr. Murphy. Yes, sir. I think I'm right. You see a statue of a hooded humanoid. There is a golden light coming from a hole in the hood. The statue is bejeweled with precious and semi-precious stones. In front of the statue is an altar from which incense is burning. Search the room. And here is Mr. Murphy. Murphy's ghost. Now, like I was saying before, this fight, from what I remember of it, it's hard to hit him, and he is not the best at hitting you. He does hit kind of hard, but the experience boost, experience points that drop off this guy are insane. So we are going to... do that. And do that. So you see, like, everything's missing. The spell might make that a little easier. Whoa, I love that. That was fantastic. That reminded me of uh, the beginning of Ghostbusters, the library. That was awesome. I love that. That is great. Oh my god. I have waited so long to see a modern take on this game. So combat against Murphy's Ghost can be very long, as you see. But at this point, I'm fairly safe. So we're just going to keep grinding at him. I love the hit point meter. Love it. You called it. Our artist said, can we do the Ghostbusters thing? That, <laughs> that's great. I don't know how many people would, would get that reference. I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan. I love the artwork for Murphy's Ghost, just in general. That pose right there. That's 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 great. Like my only visual of him was from well, let's see what he looked like in Apple II. Just, just a blob entity. But on the Nintendo, he was an orange hooded character. And um, I never never wondered, I never thought what was under the hood. I like what's under the hood. Like, someone encountering this character for the first time would be scared to death because it looks like, unlike anything you've seen in the dungeon yet, 
and that animation is phenomenal. I can't wait to see how many experience points we get off this. Somebody texted me on the phone and said, why did I take the robe off, the hermit robe, because it was hot. I just, I've tried it many times to game in the hermit robe. I can't do it for long term. So I think instead we might do a Mr. Rogers kind of thing with it. He comes in and takes his sweater off every episode. I might have to just come in with the robe and take it off because I can't wear it long term. I don't know how Dr. Disrespect does what he does. I can't do it. I can't game in cosplay the whole time. All right, Murphy. Round 16. I like I like that you uh, number the rounds. All right, Murphy. So if you're curious about a lot of the inner workings of wizardry, you can go to my YouTube channel. There's a link to it on my website, oldgamehermit.com. Uh, one of the only things on there is my interview with Robert Woodhead, um, where we talk a lot about the technical aspects of the game. Um, he talks a bit about his inspiration for Murphy's Ghost, and some of the things I've mentioned during this playthrough come straight from that interview. I love talking with uh, with Robert. I've asked him for his thoughts on uh, this release. He's not answered. He may or may not. He's active on Twitter slash X, whatever you want to call it. But um, I don't know. He may not even be allowed to discuss it. Or he may not care. He's largely moved on from wizardry. I suspect, though, he might secretly, privately take an interest in this version of the game. Because he does like to see what people have done with it. That's a quote he gave me once. Come on. Am I going to have to finish him off with a spell? He's whittling away at Wilma here, so let's just... It's easy to get into that grind and stop paying attention. There we go. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's so awesome. Four thousand four hundred and fifty experience points. Good God, that was that was amazing. Oh, crap. I did not mean to do that. I like that it's repeatable. All right. Well, let's... Sorry for the repetition, everybody, but let's go ahead and, and do this one more time. I was... I hit the button semi on purpose. I just wanted to see what would happen if I searched it again. I didn't expect it to launch the fight. If my memory serves me correctly, you used to have to exit the dungeon and come back to redo the fight. Or maybe exit the room and come back. It, it's been a long time. So you can see where the optimum grinding spot is, right? Right here. Let's see if a little fire spell lights him up any. Oh, 
Let's see what it does. I like how I can see what character is next. Halito is ineffective. Okay. Well, he took four damage off the one. Love the music. I got a nice courtesy follow from the uh, composer of the soundtrack the other day. The name escapes me, let me tell you. She did a wonderful job. Winifred Phillips is the name. Really good stuff. It's interesting to me because the music is very similar to previous incarnations of the game, but it's also different enough that it's not the same. Spell points exhausted. Oh no, my spell points are exhausted. What about Shorty? Do we have pre-spells yet? Nope. All right. Well, we've got to be real lucky here. Oh, that was a good hit. She was a treat to work with. Yeah, she did great work. It's excellent. I read somewhere that perhaps not everything in the game is finished, so I don't know if all of her music is in the game or not. Um... I'm hesitant to ask you too many questions. I don't want you to give away all of your, your secrets. But um, I'm totally adoring everything I've heard so far. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm starting to get nervous about this fight here. Brundorf is... On, on the on the edge there. That that sound sounded familiar. That that grunt. Where have I heard that before? All right, come on, Murphy. The grunt when the characters swing vaguely reminds me of like the original Quake jump noise. There's more coming for sure. The stuff we post in the roadmap is what we can talk about and it's early access, so. There's a world where we sell gangbusters and where we shoot for the moon. But we just have to see how it goes. Yeah, I understand. Sato Cat says the grunting is her coming into work in the morning. <laughs> Come on, Brundorf. Pull through, buddy. Don't die. All right. We're going to go all out here. What do we got? Does this stack, I wonder? I don't want to blow it all because I still have to navigate out of here, right? Surely it wouldn't be this easy. Can we dispel Murphy's Ghost? I don't think so. It never worked for me before. But he sure didn't like her trying. Come 
Come on, come on, come on. Let's pull it out, guys. We have no more healing left in me. Alright, so I'm getting nervous about this fight. So let's go ahead and. I'm out of level 1 spells for her, right? Yep. So we'll attack. Just gonna hope this stacks. I really don't... Oh, we're out of spell points there too. Alright, well, we're gonna white knuckle it all the way to the end. Come on, pull it out. I did not intend to fight him a second time. That was me just not paying attention. And there's no running from this encounter to the best of my memory either. Yeah, there we go. That was close. Way closer than I'm comfortable with. Let's not touch anything. Let's leave the room. All right. So the way out of here is that way. And I'm back into the darkness. Trying to figure out exactly where I am again. So I was in a little, I bet you I'm right here. So I want to go, no? Boxed in. Where? We walk until we hit something. Oh, good. Thank you. Have a nice day. no idea which direction I'm facing. Like I said earlier, I haven't been lost in Wizardry 1 on the first floor in God knows how long. But sooner or later, we are going to emerge. Now, that's not the shortcut, but it's close enough, right? Ooh. Corridor out of limits turned back. Nice. always forget about that sign. So where am I? I know right where I'm at. We are almost out of here. Thank you for being friendly kobolds today. So let's level up. Da -da 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 -da. Almost everybody except Merlin here has a level up two friendlies. So lucky. So you say that, but one thing I've noticed as a trend in a lot of these games, at least from my experience, is the friendlies seem to come in waves. Like, I'll encounter them back-to-back -back multiple times. Um, and I always thought it was a programming thing, but maybe it's not. 
I figured maybe there is a party of friendly monsters roaming the maze. That's what was decided at, a, at random, and so I keep bumping into them. I don't know if that's really the case or not, but that's what seems to be um, what happens. Again, it could be just my imagination, and it is completely random. But I've always tend to see them in waves like that. Yeah, I'm trying to. There we go. And Shorty is my priest, right? My bishop. Let's go ahead and just max him out. There we go. Alright, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take a short little break uh, for maybe about five to ten minutes refresh a drink, grab a little snack. Um, feel free to hang out, talk amongst yourselves. Sorry for the break, but we will return momentarily.
Hey there, welcome back. Sorry for the break. What do we have? Sometimes my character just skips their turn, trying to figure out why. I think perhaps I've observed that too. I'll be fighting and it just seems like it, it hangs, it freezes. Um, I see the border around my character there and nothing happens. Um, I was curious about that myself. Could be a bug, could be something else. I don't know. If you look at the Steam, if you go to Steam and you look at the forums for the game, there is a roadmap that the developers have uh, listed, and it's things that I think they've confirmed to be adding to the game, updates, uh, so forth. Sounds like you know they've got their public list of what they're for sure going to be able to roll out, and then they've got their their private fantasy list of things they'd like to do, things they'd like to add that they're not going to go public with, which I totally understand the reasoning behind that. Perhaps they were stunned. That's kind of what I was thinking, too. Maybe they just fumbled. I don't, I don't really know. So we are healing up, as usual, in the dungeon because it is cheaper and a little more efficient to do so. Wilma will soon run out of uh, spell points, so we will go back, and poor Wilma will age yet again. Mazes can shift around you. Did you see that? I like that. that. That was alluding to the traps and tricks in the maze. A balance part is good flex breaks, an extra mage or two can help you. It's loading so fast I can't read all of the uh, screen. A good problem to have. Poor Wilma isn't going to have the will to live anymore. Well, so, for now. but So eventually, um, Shorty will also learn healing spells. And then Kyler here, once he becomes a lord, he will have access to healing spells. Uh, there'll be more than just this healing spell later down the road. Um, so it won't be quite as bad um, in the near future. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of stick with my routine of mapping a level and then calling it a stream. It's so tempting not to do that because we have special guests and a lot of watchers today. But I'm going to keep uh, playing probably every day this week. First work was done about November of 2022. We weren't supposed to start until February, but we couldn't help ourselves. We we're also trying to figure out why sometimes you skip your character action. It's totally cool. It's alpha. It's early, um, early access. These things are to be expected. I would actually be a little worried if um, we weren't seeing bugs, right? All right, so where have we been? Where have we not been? So I'm gonna be honest with you. If I was playing without an audience, I would head right back to Murphy's Ghost over and over and over again and grind out levels. That's what I would do. Um, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to bore everybody. One thing I do want to point out, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the party makeup. Um, level 5, level 4, level 5. Brundorf there at level 4. So the characters don't level necessarily alongside each other because Brundorf being a samurai, that's an advanced class. It's going to take him longer to reach a level than... Frodette, the thief, who was the first one to level. That's by design. So we've been just about everywhere. For the sake of my own sanity, I am going to refer back to my legacy map of Wizardry 1 because I want to see if I have mapped everything or not. Because some of the map is inaccessible. Put that over 
here, so I'm looking. There's a hidden door I've not found. A couple, actually. So, with that knowledge in mind, I want to go check it out. Because I don't recall seeing it this time around. There's also a couple places on this level that, I, again, I could be wrong about this, but I seem to remember you're only able to teleport into. Which we're not going to worry about that now, of course. <clears throat> what are we saying here? Another advantage of the thief is they are real. They level really fast. You can use them to build up stats quickly and change to more advanced class. Yep, absolutely. He says, and he runs off. So I'm curious here. I thought I cast a Milwa spell, but this door did not shimmer like the other ones. Interesting. Did I not cast it? Or maybe it doesn't work the way I think it works. It's me when I'm confronted at work. This is true. <laughs> okay, either I didn't cast it or my magic was nullified somehow. Or it wears off, I don't know. I can't remember. In this room is a silver statue of a boar with horns and long fangs. On the wall by the statue is a message, partially obscured, that appears to have been left by passing elves. It is hardly legible, but some of the comments warning about ghosts and demons can still be made out. I found the silver key. So I actually think at this point I have found, so we found the silver key, right? We found the bronze key. We found Murphy's ghost. We've seen the elevator, we've seen the eggs, uh, the, the shortcut. I think that is truly like all of the goodies on this level. Um, there's still a few spots I haven't explored. But I don't really think there's much there. Still, for the sake of everything, we will hit them up. Or I'm wrong. I'm in the wrong spot. That's what it is. Like I say, I think there's a few places I can teleport into <clears throat> that I can't get to any other way. Again, you've got to forgive me. It has been... I probably haven't played Wizardry 1 mm, for 12 years. I played it when I first started my blog. So yeah, Milwa must just wear off pretty quick because I know there's hidden doors here. Just the whole map, go back. What are you saying? The wall was moving. It was moving. Okay. I missed it. Go back to the hallway. I will. One second. 
So this is cool. You see how they fell asleep and they got grayed out there in the chain of the uh, the battle order there. That's cool. That Kanido spell really did a good job here. So you say go back to the hallway. Well, I know there's a, a hidden door here. I think there's nothing in the room, though. And there should be one here, too. Again, I'm going off my previous experience with the game for these. But you said you saw something in the hallway moving? Right here. There you go. Good eye. Good eye. dead ends but it's 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 so fun to find them i like the fact that the developers here did this the subtle clue right instead of just letting you see the door which i think in the past you could just see the door um this still leaves a little mystery you still you have to pay attention some of the decisions that they made here i think are just absolutely fantastic i love it I'm so excited for this. I would love to see you or Danny play this. Um, here we are. Um, because I, I've played this since... I think the first time I played this game was 1989. And even then it was eight years old, right? Um, I would love to watch somebody play it for the first time. This is the granddaddy of all dungeon crawlers. They, they, they just don't make them like this anymore. There's games like Etrian Odyssey and, and things like that that are similar, but it's not the same. The fun part that you haven't seen yet um, is when you find an item in the chest and your characters, they know it's a sword, but they don't know what kind of sword. And you're afraid to equip it because it might be cursed. Danny says, I wish I had a gaming computer. So this game, I'd have to look at the uh, system requirements for it. I don't think it's a big hog. Um, there's not a whole lot of processing going on here, graphical, graphic-wise, right? I want to buy it, but I've never streamed before. We don't have to stream it. You can buy it and play it. Um, heck, I'll come over to your house and watch you play it. But um, it's easy to stream, really, truthfully. So we got a big fight here, y'all. I don't have any uh, AOE spells yet, right? Uh, not, not damaging spells, anyways. I have a gaming laptop. If you watched my uh, Labyrinth of the Lost Souls stream, you may remember the Vorpal Bunnies. See, it's happening here. It's just like hung. Uh, he, they make an appearance in this game as well. I'm curious to see what they look like in this game. Hissing like that made me think of rats, which made me think of bunnies, which is why I mentioned the Vorpal Bunnies.
true, but if I just want to play it, streaming would be easier for you to watch it. This is true. You can see one briefly in the trailer. Now that you mention it, it's at the very end, isn't it? I did see that. Vorpal bunnies. <laughs> That's what I always hear when I think about Vorpal bunnies. All right, so we are. Let's go ahead and check out the second floor. I think we can. Ooh, well, okay. Let's level Merlin first, and then we will check out the second floor. We're just gonna dip our toe into it. I don't wanna spend much more time tonight. The natives of the house are getting restless. I know people are face palming themselves when they see how I assign these points. I mean, you know, you never know what you're going to do. So I may want to, um, at some point, change him. I, I doubt it, but some people say there's no point in giving a wizard or a mage strength. But you know, the way the game used to play, it would have been randomly uh, assigned anyway, so don't worry about what I'm doing. When they wind up in your front lines in a close fight, you won't regret it. That's a good point. One more heal up for Wilma here, and we are going to check out the second floor. This is going to answer a question that I've been curious about. I want to see if the artwork changes, meaning like the, you know, colors of the walls and whatnot. It may not, and that's totally fine. It sure didn't in the original release back in the day. Um, the only level that looked a little bit different, I think, was the last level. And even that, I might be thinking of um, one of the other games. We're going to wait. And if it follows suit with some of the more modern Japanese releases, the color, the artwork may change every so often. Every three levels, every four levels, whatever the case is. but it would be such a treat if it did change. So, no big change, that's okay. So, does my Duma pick still work? We're going to mill one now. Oh, and I can see more. Love the music. Previous versions of the game had uh, no music in the dungeon at all. It was just the town and the fights. Down we go. See, this is where it gets so easy to get lost or in trouble because you get so deep weird humanoids we got zombies or something here creeping cruds so yeah we're gonna fight the cruds that looks undead to me back there so we're gonna dispel one Oh, 
yes, here we go. We've got a paralyzed character. All right, all right, all right. Yes, this is okay. Let's do it. Oh, that was beautiful. The dispel worked. So it is a party-wide. Fantastic. It's always so good when that when that actually lands. Oh, we're poisoned. Oh, good. We're in trouble now. Come on, hit, hit, hit. Hit the crud. There we go. Okay, so. How do we get back, right? Because it's time to get back. So Brundorf is... We're hurting here, let's see. Alright, so. I'm going to do a pick... I don't think Wilma has anything to deal with some of this yet. No, not really. Alright, so we are headed back. Let's go back home. Yes, we will do that. But we've got to get there first. So you see Brundorf, every step he's taking, he's losing uh, hit points because he's poisoned. And I do not have a spell that can remove the poison. I do have a spell that can cure him. So if he gets too low, like right now, I'm going to definitely go ahead and give him a little kicker for all the good that did. Oh, and is the healing negated a bit by the poison, I wonder? It seems like it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we had to climb up to the first floor. Oh yeah, we are hurting. So the temple is where we're going to go to fix this. Or did his poison just go away? Right, well, I know Kyler needs to be restored at the temple. And Wilma has leveled up. Yes, I know. I'm trying to. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so this, I do think, is probably where I'm going to end the stream for the night. Um... I have other things that I need to attend to, but it's been a blast mapping out that first level and taking a dip into the second level. Um, the game is, as I remember it, just prettier, and um, some of the rougher edges have been sanded down a bit. Um, I'm all in on it, seriously. Um, I'm the kind of guy, if it says wizardry, I'm going to buy it. It doesn't matter. Even some of the odder things that have come out over the years. But this is what I've wanted. The problem is, I don't think Wizardry has been available for purchase since like 98, maybe. The Ultimate Wizardry Archives was the last official version of the game you could buy. And even then, it was just the old 1980s DOS version um, with a DOS emulator. So having it, being able to play it on a modern machine natively is fantastic. Uh, I want people to learn about this series. I want people to see what is so captivating about wizardry. Um, and this is an excellent way for people to do that. Um, so many young folks these days, the attention span is not, you know, what it was when I was younger. So I, I worry that people won't be able to enjoy it because they're wanting this and they're wanting that. They're wanting all the fast paced action that comes in so many modern games. But there's something about the simplicity, right, of the game. 
um, that appeals to me. And I think it can appeal to, to younger people too. Um, and so having it with this coat of paint on it is, is exactly what we needed. Um, I really hope it does well. I would love to see Wizardry 2, Wizardry 3. Heck, I'd love to see the first five games. That's a tall order, and I don't ever expect I'd see that in a million years. But if we could just get the first two or three, I could be very happy. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. So if you're watching the stream and you were on the fence, I hope I helped convince you maybe to take that plunge, buy the game, play it for yourself, um, turn the lights off, play it in the dark, it is excellent. You won't be disappointed. And um, thanks again for Panda for, for stopping in and, and saying hello and answering questions. And everyone who watched, feel free to follow me. Um, visit oldgamehermit.com uh, for reviews on all of the classic Wizardry games. They're there. Just type Wizardry into the search box. You'll find everything and more that you ever wanted to see. And I will be back again tomorrow night picking up where we leave off. So thanks again. And everybody, have a great evening.